Hey Jackals, in this video we'll make the simple but cool looking smiley transition in DaVinci Resolve. Now let's get digital. <laughs> I'll be making this in the fusion composition. So go to the media pool, right click, make a new fusion composition. You can leave everything as is. Then put it onto a timeline, select it, move the playhead over it and go into the fusion page. Now the smiley face that you saw, that was not an image. While we could use images, it's not the best use case. So what we can do is actually use the polygons to make the smiley face. So I'll use an ellipse and make another ellipse. So the first one will be maybe for eyes and I'll use a background node. And the second ellipse will be for the background. So if I display it on the left and change the color of the background to a yellow one, so this will be the background and then this will be the eyes. Merge these two together so this background has to be yellow. So the eyes will be on the top. Now I'll scale the ellipse down to make an eye. I'll now copy this ellipse and paste it. Move it over, maybe scale it a little bit. And for the mouth. I have used the B spline because it makes automatic curves. So I'll simply do it like this. Now in the B spline and increase the border width. And what I have also done is I've added another point like so to make the mouth a little bit more animated. Now you can go in match the height of the mouth. Now you can uncheck the solid. In this case, it doesn't make any difference because these two points are not connected. If I would connect the last point to the first one and click on the append, then these two points would be connected and the shape would be filled solid. But because I don't want that, I'll simply leave it like this. If the positioning is off, you can simply select the B-spline, move it around, maybe adjust the points. You can also do the same with the eyes. Now the last thing that I've added was the outline. So I'll simply copy this ellipse, right click, paste an instance of it. So it's the same size and I'll simply copy this background because it will also be black. Now, because this is an instance, I'll have to the instance the border width. And I'll also have to the instance the solid. Because I don't want these two options to also affect the original node. So the lips will be solid, but this one will not be solid. This will have a background, but I have to connect it and display it so like that. You can decide if this border is in the foreground or in the background. It doesn't really matter. The only thing that will affect is how wide the border width you then have to set. Maybe something like this. Now what I will also do is adjust the soft edge to 0 0.02 and I'll basically use this value in all of the ellipses. Now because this one is instanced, when I typed in 0 0.002, this one also got this value, but I'll have to paste this value to the B-spline, this ellipse, and the ellipse beneath it. <laughs> so we have the shape, now we have to make the animation. To make the animation, you have a couple of options. The way I've done it is keep it simple and simply use the transfer node. So in the transfer node, I'll be using the size to animate this, but just make sure that the icon or the shape that you have doesn't go outside of the screen. So in my case, something like this would be the maximum size. And for the time being, just put the icon to the maximum size. Now add a duplicate node, control space for shift space to open the select tools. Now when it comes to copies, you can offset it and if we have no copies, 
we have the original transform. So we'll have to animate the transform and the duplicate, just so you see. As for the copies, I'll be using maybe 20 copies. I'll be using the size to animate them later on. I'll do most of the positioning in the jitter and the axis is affected if you change the size here or the angle. Now I can go back in the transfer node and also what you have to take note of is the frame rate that you have in the timeline. In my case this is 30, so 30 frames is one second and this goes from 0 to 29. So the animation has to end in 15 frames, 15 frames in total from 0 to 14. This is the animation ending. So I will keyframe the maximum size of the transform at this point and I'll start the animation on frame 2. Don't start the animation on frame 0 or 1 because then the ending animation will not look smooth. I'll simply scale this down to 0 and now in the duplicate node I will also be animating the size. So let's see, at halfway point, this is the maximum size and now I have to basically make the size work and also adjust the jitter so the whole screen is filled up. So maybe something like this. I'll also keyframe the size in the duplicate node at frame 14. This will be the pinnacle of the animation. And because I want to offset the size a little bit, I'll maybe stir the animation at frame 4. Now if you want the main smiley to be in the front, what you can also do is in the duplicate node, under the blur, you have this merge under option, simply enable it and this smiley will be in the front. Now we have to reverse this animation, it's a really simple thing to do. Now we have animated two properties, the size in both cases, in the duplicate and in the transfer node. So in the duplicate node, right click, insert Anim curves input anim curves select the option the modifier tabs shows up from the source change custom to transition and simply enable the mirror option so that the animation also ends this takes care of the duplicate node and as you can see it fills up in the halfway point because this is now a 5 second long transition and we'll do the same with the transform, go to the size, right click, insert anim curves, change custom to transition and mirror the animation. That's all done, we can now go to the edit page, check the awesomeness that we made. Now before you add the modifiers you could also go to the spline and animate the size how you want. In this case, this is now an input, it's not size because this is now anim curves. If you want to make the animation adjustments so it's a little bit more snappier, you should do so before you connect the sizes to the anim curves. Because as you can see, this does not affect the size of my icon. And if the anim curves was not connected, this should change the size. Anyway, now that the animation is done, you can put it over the clip and you can also increase the duration or decrease it. But that's really not what you want to do. You want to have a transition like this. I'll simply remove this one. So what we'll do, we'll use one of the existing transitions Maybe I'll just use the blur node, put it between two clips, select it, right click on it, convert it to a fusion cross dissolve clip. Now I'll go to the fusion composition that I've just made, select all of the nodes, except the media out, we don't need it, copy the nodes, 
then right click on the transition that you've added, open it in Fusion page. In this case, we have two media ins, which is what we want. And this transition only has a dissolve node. We can right click to ungroup this. We'll just leave this as is, paste our transition in, connect it. Now this transition that we just made will be on the top. So green input, that's right. And this will move from one clip to the other, but in the dissolve node, we don't want this animation. So we can simply disable it and we'll make an instant transition from zero to one. This changes the background from the first clip to the second one. <laughs> you can simply go to my website to get this handy little expression for dynamic transitions <laughs> and this will instantly switch automatically between the background and the foreground. So type in equals, paste in the expression. Now the only thing that you have to notice is which clip is in the front. So in this case, the two dudes that are jumping is the first clip. And this is switched around. So the easiest way to fix this is to select the dissolve and simply hit Ctrl T. And now we have the correct transition. So this is done. If you want, you can now group everything up like it was before, Ctrl G. <laughs> and now to make this a custom transition, select it, right click, create transition preset, give it a name, smile tutorial, okay. And now, when you have the effects opened, you should be able to type in the transition name. Now let's see how it looks like. Awesome. And now you can do the same operations that you can on other clips. So you can extend it in one way, or extend it, or shorten it in both ways. <laughs> and that's it. Now you should have a cool looking transition. And if you want to share it with others and also put an image here, I have a video on that, so check it out. If you found the video helpful, give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, and hit the bell notification icon so you know when my next video comes out. I'm Simon, and until next time, Jackals, keep it digital. Thank <laughs> you.